I can't see them. I can't see them anymore. The May-June issue of Sky News ran two articles related to light pollution. So I thought it timely that at this May meeting of the RESC Edmonton Centre, I should present my song on science entitled Someone's Light Machine. As most of you are aware, light pollution is a growing issue, not only for astronomers, but also for plants and animals who depend on daily light and dark cycles to govern activities such as reproduction, hunting, sleep, and protection from predators. For example, nocturnal animals are active at night, and light pollution alters their nighttime environment. Sea turtles hatch at night on the beach and find the sea by detecting the bright horizon over the ocean. Artificial lights draw them away from the ocean, and in Florida alone, millions of hatchlings die this way every year. Every year, millions of birds die colliding with needlessly illuminated urban buildings and towers. Artificial lights can create a fatal attraction to many insects, and declining insect populations can impact species that rely on insects for food and pollination. Light pollution is excess light above what nature provides, and its source is mainly from industrial development by humans. Most light pollution is found in urban settings where artificial light sources are numerous and is mainly caused by light systems that are misdirected, excessive, inefficient, or unnecessary. For example, light sources may be partly directed towards the sky, or downward directed light may be reflected upward. Light is then dispersed by layers in the atmosphere and produces a glow that diminishes the darkness of the night sky. In large Canadian cities, more than 95% of stars that can be normally seen with the naked eye are no longer visible. For amateur astronomers, light pollution is a major problem because access to a truly dark sky is increasingly difficult to find. For professional astronomers, it interferes with the collection of data, forcing observatories to be built in isolated regions. Organizations such as the International Dark Sky Association and the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada have set up programs that attempt to reduce light pollution. However, everyone can help by adopting four lighting principles that ensure a safe environment while minimizing impacts on the night sky. Number one, reduce light intensity by choosing luminaries with not too excessive light intensity. This will let the eye better adapt to ambient brightness while ensuring necessary visibility and sight security. Number two, Adjust orientation by choosing luminaries whose light is oriented towards the area to be lighted. Remember that light emitted towards the sky or towards the horizon does not help you see better. Control time by installing a timer or a motion sensor. Or by simply turning off the lights before going to bed. That is, use only the light you need. Finally, limit blue light by giving preference to amber light sources over white light ones, which are more harmful to sky glow and health. Light pollution is something we can all help reduce in our homes and backyards, the parks where we play, and our cities. Someone's light machine is an expression of regret at the loss of our night sky. I can't see them. I can't see them anymore Or when I step outside my door I'm sure they were there yesterday But now they have gone away I used to watch for falling stars And track the retrograde of Mars Now I can barely find the moon Or differentiate midnight from noon used to look up at the sky and count a thousand stars by eye. Now 
I can't see them anymore. Now I can't see them anymore. I marveled at the northern lights, but always thought they were too bright. Someone's light machine. I used to look up at the sky and count a thousand stars by eye. Now I can't see them anymore. I can't see them anymore. I can't see them anymore.